Lights are at the shop here, and uh, it's a mostly cloudy type day, but uh, it's all swampy and nasty out here because everything's thawed. Garbage truck leaves some nice big ruts because my parking lot's uh, all uh, gravel and fill in here, so it's real soft. But I wanted to give you guys a shot of this John Deere running. It's got a little squeaky PTO bearing, but other than that, that I can see. It's nice and quiet back there. I think it was cavitating before because it kept leaking down, so. It's running pretty good. But this is what I was talking about with the uh, oil fill cap. That'll rattle around over there. There it goes. So it's got a little crankcase pressure, not a whole lot, but we're going to pull these side shrouds off here now that it's warmed up. And uh, we'll give it a little cylinder leak down test and uh, see what we can find out. So I will uh, get you guys set up on the tripod and we'll pull these side covers off and go from there. So I'll be back in a minute get started here I have to get a ratchet and uh, I used all that drained out ATF out of that machine and put it in a paint cup here to uh, soak my ratchets in and if you get a ratchet that binds up you can soak it in some ATF and usually they'll uh, loosen up for you this Cornwall one here I've been working on it for a couple years I should just return it but I don't have a Cornwall truck that comes around here It's been, it, it was a freebie ratchet. Came with a bunch of stuff that I got. I think the teeth in it are actually broken. Um, I got it freed up one other time, and it actually uh, tried to break my knuckles when I used it. So. spins but it doesn't spin nice. I'm soaking that one but what I'm looking for is my little uh, Harbor Freight uh, nylon or composite uh, quarter inch drive here. This one freezes up on me occasionally but it's such a nice little ratchet. And we'll go ahead and uh, just keep soaking it. I don't want to have to run back over there just for a ratchet. So, we got some 716s, an open end, and uh, this ratchet here. We'll go ahead and take these side covers off. There's not a whole lot to them. There's a bolt here, here, and these are, I think, are supposed to have capture nuts in them, but uh, I think they've long since uh, disappeared. U-nut or something like that. Uh, this I bought this tractor from a buddy of mine and he did some work to it before I got it so I'm not exactly sure if he was the one that replaced them with regular fasteners or what the deal was. But I've just got some uh, quarter 20s in it. tractor is nice and warm. You should be able to, uh, if the rings are sealing well, that'll show up in a compression test or a leakage test. Is 
side shrouds just pop right off. favorite ratchet of all time. This is a snap-on uh, swivel head ratchet. Now, if you're not wearing gloves, these plugs are probably going to be warm. a little oily but I've seen worse for sure so I will uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tear the other side down real quick and I'll bring you guys back with the uh, cylinder leakage tester my cylinder leak down tester here uh, I've got it hooked up to the air when you plug these in this is a Harbor Freight model since I don't do this professionally this is the one I have Make sure your air regulator is backed all the way out when you plug it in. Um, the gauge will sit wherever the gauge sits when you first have it plugged in um, until you uh, start putting the air to it. So you thread this hose into here it come, and it has a uh, quick disconnect coupler so that you can uh, disconnect it from the tool. And it comes with these different spark plug hole adapters. So what you want to do is you want to rotate the engine over. I've actually, since I have the seat off, I'm using the drive shaft here. And I have a pry bar in the uh, U-joint and I have it clamped. Um, you rotate it over until it's on compression stroke of top dead center. So you'll rotate that over and you can put your finger in the top of the spark plug hole as it's blowing air out. And as it stops blowing air out, um, both the valves will be closed but well, this is a flathead so you can actually take a uh, flashlight and look toward the intake valve and make sure that it's closed and the exhaust valve is closed because some of these have the I don't know if these do but some of the older ones have compression release and it'll float the intake valve just a little on the uh, intake stroke I'm sorry compression stroke uh, until it just for easy cranking but uh, I've got this one set at top dead center and I've got that clamped because when you put the air to it down there it will actually make it want to push off the top dead center and uh, we've got the air cleaner off and the breather off um, the oil fill on this one in particular because that's where I was hearing the rattling sorry I screwed up and turned the camera off I meant to uh, hit the focus here and get us zoomed in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the air on until that needle hits this um, the zero and we'll watch it and see if uh, see if it climbs up so there we go that's set at zero now if this needle starts Coming up into uh, this is 20%, 40, 60, and then 
lots of blow by, um, then we'll know we have a problem. Now I do hear air leaking and you're going to hear some because you're going to get air blowing by the rings just a little bit. Um, I've got almost 70 pounds of air going into there. Now, I've got just a little teeny bit of air coming out of the uh, oil fill, not much. But there's nothing coming, I've already put my ear down here and you can hear if it's coming out the intake. The other thing to do is put your hand over that so you're not listening to it and listen out the exhaust. And I have no air coming out the intake or exhaust so the valves are holding. Um, we just have a little bit a blow by coming by those rings but not a lot I mean if you look that gauge isn't moving so we'll go over I'll get it set up for the other side and uh, we'll take a listen to the other side we'll get this zoom back out here set up on this side uh, let's zero that gauge out and we'll see if that drops um, You've got a teeny tiny exhaust valve leak on this side, it seems like, but uh, we'll check it with the compression test and see how bad it is. It really uh, doesn't seem like much, but like I explained before, I'll put my hand over where the air is coming out of the uh, dipstick tube and I'll listen at the exhaust here and I can just hear a faint whisper. So we know we have an exhaust valve leak just a tiny bit right there. I've tried rocking it back and forth off top dead center, but it's uh, it's leaking just a tiny bit. So now I'm going to uh, go ahead and give her the compression check and uh, see where we get from there. The compression tester in the cylinder over here. I've got a battery charger on it. That battery is pretty low, and uh, you need to when you do this set your throttle wide open so it can suck the most air through the carburetor as possible when it's making compression and uh, <clears throat> you need to be able to spin it pretty fast 1000 rpm or better um, so we're going to watch this gauge we need to to be really good we need to be 110 to 120 This side's hitting at about 90 psi, and uh, I checked the other side already, and it's about um, right at 100, so it's a little bit better. So uh, that could be just a matter of uh, a valve job on this thing. Um, it's not terrible, so I'm probably just going to continue to run it. The thing does run. Um, it's just it's leaking oil out of that filler cap right there, so. That's, uh, that's how I do a compression test. Um, I'm not a small engine mechanic, although I play one on YouTube. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with this one. We're probably going to run it for a while. Um, could also be a leaky head gasket, but I didn't hear any air coming out around the head itself. So that's... Uh, well, that tripod's crooked. That's where I'm going to leave this one for, for now. I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. It does run and it runs fine. Um, doesn't have any trouble starting. Uh, it's just a little bit of oil leak issue around that, uh, around that fill cap. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe doctor that up. And uh, that'll be it for uh, this video. So enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, we'll catch you later. Still uh, Tuesday the 14th, I believe it is. And... Uh, we're going to get our next project inside. You can see I am sitting in the skid steer, Cat 246. And uh, we're going to get this thing fired up and uh, you'll figure it out here in a minute.
over by the shop door. I'm not sure if this will or will not fit in the shop. I think if I make a straight run at it, we might get it. At this trailer, we're gonna section some fenders in it. This is the good one. Um, this has just got a few spots on it. The other one you can see over there is Swiss cheese. So I'll bring you back in a minute here uh, when I get it inside. The shop, she fits by a hair, that's about it. But this is the one that's real bad. So what I'm gonna end up doing with this is we're gonna take the uh, plasma cutter and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut across up here and then right down along the edges of where it goes up to the frame and then right down along here as close as I can get and then I'll grind that flat and then we'll finish cutting the rest of it out. I'll probably have to section it in, uh, I don't know, probably somewhere up in here about eight inches up to get rid of that. The rest of the fender's in good shape. We talked about replacing the whole thing, but I think we're gonna skip on it. He has toolboxes that go on this, and this is uh, chassis grease that's smeared all over here, and tar um, kept them from rusting out on the top, but uh, I think this fender, it got whacked there, and it broke the paint, and uh, maybe had to have the torch put to it at one time to straighten it out, so it rotted, so. We'll have to get all the goop off these fenders before we take the plasma cutter to it. And then the other side isn't bad at all. Or at least what I can see right now. Who knows what I'll get into. But this is a Hudson Brothers trailer. Uh, it's probably 25 or 30 years old. So these things hold up good. I'm sure it's had new decking put on it. But yeah, we'll just section this one in up to here. And then the other one will come up just past those bolt holes so not too bad so there you go guys this is going to be tomorrow's project i'm going to start getting this cut out and get some material for it so there you go i'll see you guys on the next one